pray that uh, as in Linda's life, so in her service here, uh, we would celebrate, but we would celebrate Jesus, knowing the hope that we have of life in Him forever. And Lord, meet us as well. Um, it is not easy saying goodbye to our mother, our grandmother, this great woman of faith. And so uh, meet us, Lord, in the tenderness of this moment as well. And in all things, would you get glory for Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen.
Hear these words from God's word that we are called to worship. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you. And by God's power, are being guarded through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. For now, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first fruits of those who are asleep. I am the resurrection and the life, Jesus says. He who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Let us pray. O God, our Heavenly Father, we praise you that you have made a way for us to live under the, uh, out from under the, the shadow of death, to live in the light of your presence forever. And it's all grace through our Lord Jesus Christ. By his death, you destroyed the power and penalty of death. By his resurrection, you've opened to us the gates of heaven. Indeed, the cross and tomb are empty. Jesus lives and so shall we. Father, all glory, honor, and blessing, praise to you for such mercy, goodness, and kindness to us. And in the hope of the resurrection of our dear Lord, we gather to celebrate the life of your beloved servant, Linda Wabi. Lord, receive our thanksgiving for her life and comfort us in any of our sorrow. Strengthen our faith with a deeper, eternal perspective of the victory of our Lord Jesus Christ over death and the grave. This we ask in his name. Amen. We open with great hymn of praise. Let's stand together and sing the first two verses of all the pale power of Jesus' name all the words to our hymns to say are written for you.
Linda heard the call as well to come to America. Now, how would that be to leave all that was familiar, all that was dear, and come that far away? I too was um, a new member, a new um, resident of the mountains, and um, by the grace of God, Linda and I became members of this church. I first knew Linda um, in our circle, near Martha's circle. We would come together, we'd have Bible study, we pray, do ministry, and have fellowship. I was impressed by Linda's quiet reverence, her wisdom, and her knowledge, the wonderful knowledge of the Lord. I was drawn to that evidence and to the Christ in the life. Who was this godly woman who had come so far and left so much behind? The country of her birth, her customs, traditions, the home where she had raised her children. Excuse me, my eyes are what they used to be, as well as some other things. <laughs> um, surely there was extended family still there. Friends from childhood. Brothers and sisters in Christ. And to go to another country so far away. Sounds biblical, doesn't it? Linda had the gift of hospitality. She shared her home and her talents, and when there you knew the presence of the Lord was there before. I was always at peace when I was in her company and in her home. And she shared with us her talents, her gifts, why all could she cook, and some dishes that I had never had before, had never tasted, and her beautiful um, service for each of us. It was a wonderful experience. I would like to say that when she went grocery shopping for some of her condiments and spices and flavors, she probably didn't find them in our local English store. When I think of Linda's influence on her children, I know that her greatest gifts in life were her saving, her godly husband, and her children. And as I look at you now, and as I remember the things you told me, I'm so gracious for your gifts to so many of us. Um, in all the areas that you serve um, the community, in medicine, um, teaching, <clears throat> the, to me, incomparable ability to broadcast um, all across the Arab world the gospel of Christ and the music, online the music. Thank you so much to soloist Hannah and, and um, I remember looking so forward for the um, patriotic um, performances that you did. It was just wonderful and I appreciate it so much. I wish that I could have been in on um, watching Linda as she raised you five children. Um, so different, I'm sure, with their own gifts and talents. <coughs> 
I would love to see her as she, with God's help, formed in you. <clears throat> One thing I remember about Linda goes back to being in the circle together, in the um, Mary Martha circle. After we finished with our program and our prayers, and we'd get up to leave to go home to cook supper. We were too old to have to go pick up children at school. But as we would get ready to, uh, to leave, we would hear Linda in a strong voice stopping us because Linda never let us leave without getting in a circle and joining hands and praying the Lord's Prayer. You know what? If I close my eyes and I'm very quiet, I think that I can hear it. Thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Gigi Graham wanted to be here today and uh, was not able to come, but I wanted to start out <clears throat> with that uh, Mama Linda knew Gigi and her mother Ruth, and uh, there were a lot of connections. We know that the Lord providentially, in fact, all of you here today have some story about Mama Linda, and uh, but we, but one of them that was uh, especially touching was. Uh, and this was from the Just As I Am book that Billy Graham wrote, uh, is how did a college student possibly save Billy Graham's life? And throughout his ministry, Billy Graham has spoken at numerous universities, colleges, seminaries around the world. And But one of the most memorable university appearances for Billy Graham was at the University of Illinois in Champaign-Urbana. Every three years in her varsity Christian fellowship, um, holds the Urbana Missions Conference over Christmas break on the University of Illinois campus, and quite a few of the Montreal College students right here have attended that uh, for years with John Ellington. Uh, they all bring in around 18,000 university students together from across the world. The conference focused on the challenge of world missions. But as a recurring speaker at the Notable Missions Conference throughout the 70s and 80s, Mr. Graham recounted one personal incident at the conference in his autobiography, Just As I Am. My left leg began to hurt during the session, and I kept lifting it and twisting it in an attempt to relieve the pressure. Sitting down in front of me was a medical student who sent a note over to David Howard, director of the convention. The pain got worse, and after I finished talking, I left the platform. I think you may have something wrong with your leg, said the young doctor. Let me examine it. He sat down in a chair and gave my leg a thorough exam. Who's your doctor, he asked. Dr. Raleigh Dixon of the Mayo Clinic. Call him right away. <clears throat> T.W. was with me and made the call. My doctor talked first with the medical student, asking him to lift my leg in all directions. And then my doctor asked to speak with me. I don't want you to leave that chair, he said. I want you to be taken back by stretcher to your quarters, and we'll send a hospital plane for you. We think you have uh, thromboflebitis. Y'all, if I got that wrong, I'm sorry, but it's a blood clot, okay? <laughs> When the plane from Minnesota arrived, T.W. Wilson, Billy Graham's son, Ned, and the medical student from Egypt, Victor Wabi, all boarded with Mr. Graham. When they landed in Rochester, Dr. Dixon and the cardiologist, Dr. Scheiber, rushed him to the hospital. They, did, they determined that Mr. Graham did, in fact, have a blood clot in the deepest vein, close to the bone. If it had broken free, it could have gone immediately to the brain. With this successful diagnosis, Wabi so impressed the staff at the Mayo Clinic that they later accepted his application for advanced study. So, uh, such a, so many different connections. I know when John came in today, I was talking to him about, I know the Billy Graham radio station, uh, Mama Linda also edited some of the Arabic 
there's just um, there's so many stories I'm sure that the whole family can talk to you about. But I wanted to leave you, um, since Gigi couldn't be here, you all know this quote, but I did want to leave you with, uh, someday you will read or hear that Billy Graham is dead, or Linda Wabi is dead. Don't you believe a word of it. I shall be more alive than I am right now. I will just have changed my address. I will be in the presence of God. Your mom is in the presence of God. Okay, this is from Martha Servery, y'all, not from <laughs> uh, the Grahams, okay? Um, <clears throat> All believers want their legacy to be a life lived for Jesus Christ. And 1 John 4.19 tells us that we love because He first loved us. It is the effectual love of Jesus that first transforms our hearts to make us capable of love for Him and others. And it is His example of love that reminds us of our need to love other people. Linda Samuel Wabi was given the gift of motherhood by Jesus, not only for her beloved children, Victor, Mephiah, Wafik, Hannah, and Haney, and other family members too, but she was also affectionately called Mama by many adopted sons and daughters God brought into her life from many different parts of the world. Linda knew that seeking God first was her priority because he promises to provide for our needs when we seek him above all else. Linda was bold in the strength of the Holy Spirit to pray in his leading and to proclaim the gospel of Jesus Christ until he called her home. How blessed were so many of us in the Christ Community Church Montreat family to worship our Savior Jesus alongside our sister Linda a godly woman who pours out her life for her Lord and others is a vessel of honor. And Mama Linda is a vessel of honor. Linda is now present with her Lord, and one day we will see her again because of Jesus, his finished work on the cross, and his resurrection and ascension. The transformed life goes on forever. We'll see your Mama again. Between my few words are bracketed verses from God's written word. Psalm 116, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. The Mary Martha circle was to be the beginning of my friendship that God forged between Linda with an I and Linda with a Y. An early memory was attending the service to the witness of the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the celebration of the life of Samuel Wabi. My orthopedic surgeon greeted me as we were in the hallway going to the reception, and he shared with me how Samuel had impacted his life by witnessing to him regarding having a personal relationship with Jesus. The example of Samuel's witnessing for our Lord while a patient in the hospital made an impression upon me to go and do likewise regarding my boldness to be a witness for Jesus in whatever the circumstance. Though this example exemplifies Samuel's, it bespeaks of the oneness in marriage of the two becoming one, underscoring Linda's godly influence. Proverbs writes of a wife of noble character. Her husband has full confidence in her. She brings him good, not harm. Her husband praises her. Coincidentally, regarding Linda, our first grandchild shared the same month and day for her birthday, January 16th. I would remind Linda on her birthday how I prayed our granddaughter would be a godly woman as she was. Over the span of 25 years, my faith 
was deepened through the friendship with this lady who had a heart after God. Prayer was the bond as we prayed with each other, not just for each other. A major difference as far as I am concerned. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. I thank God for the gift of Linda. She fought the good fight. She finished the race. She kept the faith. Now she is wearing the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, awarded her. As an aside, it is a good thing that she throws her crown at his feet, as hers would be too heavy to wear. Thank you all for coming. This means the world and eternity to my family and myself. Oh, I know that Mama Linda, my mother, would have loved to be with you all today. So thank you one and all for your love towards Mama Linda and to us. In the first verses of John chapter 13, the Lord promised in my father's house there are many mansions. I'm going there, Jesus says, to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and welcome you into my presence, so that you also may be where I am. And there is something interesting here. Some of you may know that according to the Oriental calendar, Easter in Egypt this year was celebrated on Sunday, May 5th, almost one month after the Western Easter. In his love and mercy and perfect timing, our risen Lord Jesus tried to graciously fulfill his promise and came to escort Mama Linda to me with him in Babylon at the dawn of the Egyptian Easter Sunday on May 5th, 2024. I know you came today to honor Mom. One level to do that is that we talk about her, her person, her achievements, and her accomplishments and lots of fun memories. However, a totally, a totally different level of honoring Mom is that we do what she would have told us and loved us to do if she were to stand in my place today and tell us about that. And here is what she wants. Mama wants each and everyone here to leave this place not honoring her, but rather honoring Christ, her Lord and Savior. The treasure, the treasure who honored her claim vessel and made her to be what she is. The catch here is that this level can only be achieved not at a later time, but when you leave this place a different person, even if you are the holiest saint in the world, Mama will have loved you to move from glory to glory towards becoming a more Christ-like person. To help us do that, I put together a five minute, 19 seconds video with an avalanche of pictures showing snapshots of Mama's life, 96 and a half years. I tried to put it in five minutes and 19 seconds. As you see Mama with my father, Pastor Samuel Wiley, Mama, with love, one of those images, please think of the march of the conquerors led by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Each one of these pictures captures the Lord, not shown in the pictures, as he leads Mama in his march of the conquerors, making her in all her life's ups 
and arms, laughs and tears, more than a conqueror. The music and the song that accompany that video is one of Mama's favorites. Happen to be one of my own songs, the Lord helped me write both lyrics and music almost 55 years ago. Precisely around 8 o'clock p.m. on Sunday, July 5th, 1970. Since then until now, the Lord used this song beyond all my imaginations to help countless Arabic-speaking people around the world to rejoice in the triumphant risen Lord. I will sing this song in the video in Arabic with the meanings of his lyrics shown on the screen in English.
lead us in this next hymn, Save Thy Grace. Thank you ever so much for coming to celebrate with us the life of our mother, Linda, or as many people call her over four continents, simply Mama Linda or Mama. Regrettably, I had major surgery recently and I cannot come in person, so we're using this video. Elizabeth and I want to share with you a few words. Mama Linda was like a true mother to her daughters and son-in-law. Whenever she prayed for the family, she encountered us amongst her own children. What never ceased to amaze me, however, is her commitment to serve God through her ministry of taping scripture in the Arabic language. These were posted on social media and watched by many, I understand, that her last taping session was only just hours before she went home. So even though she sleeps, yet she speaks. Yes, indeed, Elizabeth. And as we sit here on beautiful Lake Wataga in Tennessee, and by the way, we thank our friends and neighbors, Jim and Rebecca Bermudez, for taping this for us. I want to share with you a few, uh, you can call them lyrics, that flow through my heart a few nights ago 
as I was watching uh, pictures and videos of Mama Linda. I call it Of Mama. On every highway and byway of our lives, you stood tall as a permanent fixture. Your likeness brightened the road at each twist and at every juncture. Yours was the ultimate unconditional love, painted live in vivid watercolor pictures. Amazing feats you managed to do. But was it really you? No, it wasn't you. It was Christ living in you. Someday the silver cord will break. You ominously, but ever so happily sang. The stanzas of your warm voice echoed and reverberated in every room of the house and how they rang. Then, early on Oriental Easter Sunday, 2024, you did break the cord and bang. Away, you silently, if cheerfully, flew. But was it really you? No, it wasn't you. It was Christ living in you. We love you back, Oodles, for what you gave in caring, praying, worrying, and such. Now, enjoy your endless eons with the Savior you loved and served, and with John, Paul, Peter, and the entire bunch. Oh, my Lord, what a crew. But was it really you? No, it wasn't you. It was Christ living in you. Finally, Mama, Willie Shakespeare said of Hamlet, Good night, sweet prince. But of you, dear Mama, we say, Good and glorious morning, sweet princess. Fare thee well. Dear Mama, good morning, and flights of smiling angels sing thee to thy rest. Any other grandchildren who would like to come and join as well as come? Here today, I celebrate uh, Mama Linda Wabi. Um, Elizabeth and, and her family, we always knew her as a, she was an anchor in our family. Her family is spread across many places in the, in the U.S. and abroad, extended family elsewhere. Um, and she always brought us together. Um, she, she, she really tied the family together and she saw through us her children, her grandchildren, and her great grandchildren. Um, an enduring legacy of, of faith and service. And we're also proud to, to have shared that with her, and we're so pleased that, um, that she also touched all of your lives as well. Um, and that is, that is it for me, so I'll pass it on. Good I am Mofit, Mama's son, and uh, Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. Psalm 
Sam Wabi, Ashley Wabi, Lyndon Wabi, and Billy Wabi. Um, so, blessed be the God, blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, he has given us a new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, and into the inheritance as imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. First Peter, uh, third, three, and four. So we uh, we were lucky enough to see uh, our mama um, back in October, and uh, you know, so she had a chance to, to see who the big girl Lindy has become, and uh, got a chance to meet Billy here who's been entertaining and trying to share. Um, and it was just uh, you know the amount of herself that she poured out into us. Um, <laughs> was inspiring, right? And um, you could tell that she, you know, she'd been struggling, and she really just was so happy to see us and see the girls and to um, that was happy that time. It was wonderful. And we have so many fun memories of the time we spent with her, the, the summers up in North Carolina. Have those forever. So we're glad that she's you know, in a better place and with our Lord and uh, no longer in pain. Thank you for that. Hey everyone. My name is Jenny, and this is Patty, and this is Abraham. Um, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this also passes, pass, so this also passes power. Is from God and not from us, accepting great things from us. We got to go and see her back in October as well, so she could meet Abraham, who was born in um, August. And her face just lit up. She really enjoyed meeting him and getting to spend time with us. And just, we have such a, <laughs> sorry, we have such good memories. And, I loved coming and visiting with her. And she, whenever we called, she was always praying for us and talking about how things were going and talking about how Abraham was doing. And though my cat scared her, she asked us every time about how our cat was doing. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and we just loved Grandma, and um, she will definitely be missed. She had such a great impact on all of our lives. I'm Philip, the baby of the bunch of you. <laughs> um, I have been crucified with Christ and no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loves me and gave himself for me. We all have fond memories of coming to visit with uh, Grandma and chasing fireflies in the great North Carolina. Uh, nighttime and playing in the little creek that she has out front. One thing that she would always tell us is, uh, eat, eat. And uh, she would always ask if we have uh, uh, were reading our Bible. And uh, she always wanted to make sure that not only our bodies were nourished, but our souls were nourished too. And I would like to encourage all of you to go home and ask your family and be close, put them close and tell them to eat not just food, but the Word of God. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. I'm Chrissy. I'm also Mama Linda's, one of her many grandchildren, um, daughter of Hannah. Um, thank you all for everything you've said about uh, our beloved grandmother today. Uh, my father, Sammy, is her son-in-law. Um, he's also sorry he could not attend here in person because he's still recovering from recent surgery and is not able to travel here. But he did want me to share a few remarks with her about, uh, about her here with you today. He says, Mama Linda was a wonderful person. She always considered me her fifth son, 
and to me, she was my second mother. She devoted her life to serving the Lord. She helped her husband, the Reverend Samuel Wepi, with his ministry, but also had her own vibrant ministry as well. She was so beloved by every member of her family, relatives, and friends. She will truly be missed by all of us, but our consolation is that she's now with her beloved Lord and Savior. Our precious memories of her will be with us forever. Thank you. Um, and then also, my oldest sister, Sally, her first grandchild, uh, is with my father, so she sends this message as well. She writes, In my earliest memories, Mama taught me to read Arabic, to bake her famous bread, and to have compassion on those who didn't have as much in their lives. She didn't stop at the lessons, though. She modeled James 1.22, instructions to be doers of the word and not just hearers. For her, this involved being our beloved grandmother, bringing a young Sally along on various ministry-related events. Of all the important lessons gleaned by our precious mama, I'd have to say that the most important was loving Jesus and living every day for him. The deep and intense theological discussions we had and the fervent prayers we heard since early childhood also didn't hurt. We'd like to say that our happiness for her finishing the race and getting that well done, that good and faithful servant outweighs how much we all miss her. When I think of all my beloved uh, mama, what she did in this life to help ensure that we get to see her again in the next life, it helps dry our tears. Thank you so much, and God bless. And then I'll just say one quick thing about uh, Mama and Baba, both of them, and it really was remarkable how everyone in their church community there was very tight-knit, and they would always say, you're so blessed, you're from such a blessed family, um, to have these as, as your, your leaders and your actual relatives. Um, and I think we'll always remember that, and it will always be a blessing. And so it's just extremely heartening to hear that she also had an impact, her and Baba, our grandfather as well, on this, this new community that they adopted later in life. So thank you all for coming, and your remarks were really beautiful about her. Thank you. God bless. At Christmas, people traditionally sing three holy child and see in heaven of peace. Nothing more beautiful and serene like a sleeping baby. In 1994, however, Mama Linda, my brother Victor and I were chatting about that. And Mama Linda ex exclaimed, isn't it time to have baby Jesus awake and active? and a new Christmas carol was born. He is awake and he is smiling, smiling within a manger. In the five minutes video you are going to watch now the song written and composed by the Wabi brothers Victor and Rafiq is presented also in English by other, by other Wabi family members while the Bible readings are narrated by Mama. Linda, take these promises from God's heart to yours through Linda's heart. He is awake and he is smiling. He is awake and he and he is smiling. Smiling within a manger, Lord of the heavens and earth. Oxen and sheep are watchers over the royal birth. God in the flesh appears.
Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. For behold, I bring you good news. Good news of great joy. Great joy that will be for all the people. Do not be afraid. Today, today, in Bethlehem, the city of David, a Savior, a Savior has been born to you. He is Christ the Lord, yes, the Messiah. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Smiling with a manger, Lord of the heavens and earth. Ox and the sheep are watchers over the royal birth. God in the flesh appearing, how could he say? Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, peace, and God's favor to all people. Glory to God in the highest, and the glory Without question, this is the great mystery of our faith. Christ was revealed in a human body. Christ was revealed in a human body. Jesus Jesus appeared. Jesus appeared in the flesh. God in the flesh appearing. How could he say be? A mercy and truth embracing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine, shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile on you. The Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. The Lord, the Lord, lift up his face upon you and give you peace, and give you peace. In our service, I want to read a passage from John's Gospel, a portion of uh, the raising of Lazarus. A certain man was ill, Lazarus of death, the villain of Mary and her sister Martha. The 
sister sent to him, saying, Lord, he whom you love is ill. When Jesus heard it, he said, This illness is not like that. For it is the glory of God, so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. And Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. Now when Jesus came, he found that Lazarus was already had already been in the tomb four days. So when Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Now, when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled. And he said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus wept. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. And some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man also have kept this man from dying? And Jesus, deeply moved again, came to the tomb. It was a cave. The stone was against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, by this time there will be an odor, for he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The man who had died came out, his hands and feet bound with linen strips, and his face wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Death always seems to come suddenly, um, just hours before Linda's passing. Uh, here she was taping Bible readings for the family YouTube channel ministry. <laughs> and then she was gone. Uh, you know, no matter how prepared we think we may be for death, um, the passing of a loved one leaves us rather shocked and stunned, perhaps feeling even empty uh, and robbed of, of another opportunity for another meal, another laugh, um, just one more conversation. Um, but our Lord does not leave us to walk in valley of the shadow of death by ourselves. He meets us here and even at this memorial service. And it's his presence that makes all the difference in the world. Look at how Jesus transformed the mourning of Mary and Martha. Uh, he received news that their brother Lazarus was sick and it was, please come quickly. And when Jesus hears this word, he stays two more days where he is. Uh, so that when he finally arrives, uh, Lazarus has been dead four days. And this is why Martha and Mary say, Lord, if you had been here, you know, why did Jesus delay? Uh, his ways and delays are often a mystery, aren't they? Uh, perhaps we have said, you have said something similar. Lord, if only you had been here, done this. But Jesus came after Lazarus' death to make it very clear that he is the author of life. And in him is the power of life and death. Now, knowing that Jesus, knowing that he's going to raise Lazarus from the dead, makes what he does at the tomb somewhat puzzling at first. Uh, I mean, he does what we would do. He weeps. Uh, why the tears, first of all? I mean, within 10 minutes' time, uh, everyone's going to be celebrating. They're going to be hugging, uh, kissing Lazarus. Why not tell everybody to, to you know, dry up? Why all the tears? Why? The tears of Jesus, these are the tears of God. These are not fake, these are not insincere, these are tears of love. God is not some impersonal 
force in heaven saying, get over it. God is a God of love and our sadness touches him. That's why Jesus weeps. He knows death hurts. But Jesus also responds to Lazarus' death with anger. Twice we're told Jesus was deeply moved. He, in other words, he feels this intense agitation uh, roaring deep inside him. What's he mad at? Well, he's mad at death. Not the sisters, not anybody. He's mad at death because death is a thief. God did not create us to die, but to live. You know, while we may be sad or angry uh, at death, we can, we can be comforted that Jesus feels those things as well. But in the end, you know, you and I, we're, we're powerless to do anything about, about death. But not Jesus. And here's why he came late to this funeral. It was to reveal again his power of who he really is, the author of life who created the sun, the moon, the stars, and every living creature. He is the source of life, the one with power to raise the dead. I mean, we've heard this repeatedly. I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, even though he dies, yet shall he live. This is who Jesus is. But Jesus knows that he's going to have to do something beyond just raising Lazarus in this particular moment. Because Lazarus is going to die again. Jesus knows he has to get to the root cause of death, which is sin. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and the wages of sin is death. To deal with the enemy of sin, Jesus is going to have to go to Lazarus' death for him and pay that eternal penalty of, of sin. And this is what Jesus does on the cross. He goes to Lazarus' grave, your grave, and my grave. He dies to death. We deserve to die in order to give us the life that we could never earn on our own, a life free from sin, death, and hell. Now, Linda Wabi was a great woman of God. What a gift she was to many, mother to many. But Linda is not in heaven today because she was such a great person, exemplary mother. She is there because she has such a great Savior, Jesus Christ. The greatest gift she leaves her family and this community is her testimony to Jesus as Lord and Savior. And that is what has been communicated through these videos and through Linda's life. And so, you know, do we know him? Are we trusting him, not just for this life, but for the life to come? And we have this myth in America, don't we, that uh, all you have to do to heaven is, is die. That is, that is not true. That, that is actually a lie from the pit of hell. It's not something that's automatic, and no amount of good works can outweigh the bad and so somehow take away our debt of sin. Only Jesus, by his cross, can do that. And is he the one we are trusting? Well, this again is the greatness of Linda Wabi. She trusted Jesus, not herself. What Jesus did for her, not anything she had done. And now she is home. She's gone from our lives, but just gone on ahead. She's in the Father's house, as, as was read earlier, uh, the mansions that Jesus has prepared for us. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And so we come to the close of this service, and we can say defiantly, death is not the final word here. Jesus Christ is. He is the reason we do not grieve as others who have no hope. He, in fact, is our cause for joy. <laughs> He's the way home, and Linda is now there. And so will we, who by faith have put our hope, our trust in Christ. There's going to be a great home coming someday. And all the saints gathered there, and it will be Jesus Christ who welcomes us. And so let us put our faith, our hope in Jesus along with all our tears and all our sadness, give it all to Jesus, because he is the one who makes the difference. He is the resurrection and the life. Amen. Let's go. God, Heavenly Father, it is before your face that the generations rise and pass away. We bless and praise you for your servant. Linda Samuel Lobby was part of this life of faith and, and the fear of the Lord. We thank that you have taken her to yourself and she now sees the very face of, of Jesus, the lover of her soul, the Savior of her life. 
Lord, for all your loving kindness towards us through, through your servant during her earthly life, we praise you for this. We thank you for how she truly was a mother to men and a great inspiration for her to pursue Jesus, to remain faithful to Jesus no matter what. Lord, what a legacy that lives on in us. But now since it was your will to call her home, thank you that for Linda, all sickness and sorrow are ended, death itself is past, and she has entered into the rest that remains for your people. The Lord, we ask that we who are inspired by her example Lord, may run with patience the race still set before us. Looking as Linda did to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. So that when our life is in, we too may be gathered with those who we love in the kingdom of your glory, where there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain. The former things will have passed away through Jesus Christ our Lord. Glory to you, O God, for such a salvation. We have in Jesus Christ our Lord, in his name we give thanks. Amen. And then we come to the final thing. And let us go ahead and say this. What can I say about Mama Linda? I am Hannah, her daughter. I would like to thank each and everyone who came here to help honor Mama's impactful life and precious memory. Proverbs chapter 31 applies to many women and today and always I apply it to Mama. Who can, who can find virtuous, noble women? For her worth is far above rubies. Many women have excelled in them all. Charm is deceitful and beauty is passing, but a woman who fears the Lord like Mama, only a clay vessel, shall bring praise to the treasure in her. In closing, the last hymn we're, go we're going to sing together in our service today is titled, Come to the Savior. Two reasons why we chose this hymn and the other two we already sang together in this service. First, these songs are among Mama's favorites in their Arabic language settings. Second reason is that these songs are deeply associated with the 1854 inception of the Coptic Evangelical Presbyterian Church of Egypt and its growth since then and until now. You may recall the stories told about American missionaries and reformed Copts cruising the River Nile on small sail fishing boats back then preaching the gospel message at villages along the river Nile banks and singing these hymns, among others, inviting Egyptians, come, come to the Savior. I'm going to sing the first verse in Arabic. It's the same words we have in English. Then we sing the chorus in verse 2 in English, come, come to the Savior. And I ask children to come and help me.